For the last few decades, South Korea has become a major connecting hub in Asia, and it just happens to be home to two major airlines in the region and the world, Korean Air and Asiana. Of the two airlines, Asiana is newer, though within the last few decades, it has become a prominent airline in the region. However, in recent years, the airline has encountered financial difficulties, which as a result, Asiana could soon be relegated to history with the pending merger with Korean Air. Yet, as we look back at the history of Asiana, we could see a major legacy airline which rose to prominence within a few decades, and it's for that reason we'll take a look at the history of Asiana Airlines. Asiana Airlines is actually one of the newer legacy airlines in South Korea and Asia, which started operations in the late 1980s. Before the founding and launch of Asiana, South Korea's aviation industry was a monopoly of a lone airline, Korean National Airlines, which was the predecessor to modern-day Korean Air. Even after being privatized in 1969, Korean Air would still enjoy a monopoly over the skies over South Korea for at least the next few decades. This would change in the late 1980s as the South Korean Chables were looking to promote competition within the skies over South Korea. One of these major business groups was the Kumho Group, which in February of 1988 would establish South Korea's second airline. While we now know it as Asiana, its original name was Seoul International Airline. For the launch of operations, the upstart airline would acquire a Boeing 77 and eventually would launch its first flight in December of 1988 between Seoul and Busan. Early on, the airline would focus its operations in the domestic market to cities such as Daegu, Gwangju, and the island of Jeju before entering the international market. As Seoul International Airline would change its name to the modern-day Asiana we know today, it would make its international debut with the launch of charter operations to Sendai, Japan in 1989. These flights would later be expanded to regular operations to major cities in Asia and opening of new connections to North America and Europe in the 1990s. To support this growth, Asiana would acquire Boeing 747, 737, and 767 aircraft, and by the late 1990s, Asiana has solidified its position within a few years as South Korea's second major airline. The momentum in the 1990s would continue in the 2000s with continued growth of the airline and the opening of the Seoul Incheon Airport in 2001, which, like Korean Air, Asiana would split its Seoul-based operations with most international flights at Incheon, while domestic operations would remain at Kimpo. In 2003, Asiana would become a member of the Star Alliance, and over the next few years, the airline would continue to acquire new aircraft such as the Airbus A330 and Boeing 777s. The 2000s were a peak time for Asiana as it was also gaining recognition as a prominent airline not just in South Korea but also around the world. Among the accolades the airline would acquire over this time includes being recognized as the airline of the year in 2009 by Air Transport World. This is also a time of difficulty amid the financial crisis in the late 2000s. Asiana would manage the situation and would evaluate its fleet and made some big investments for the future. It was during this time that Asiana would see a shift to Airbus aircraft, phasing out aircraft such as the Boeing 737s in favor of the Airbus A320 and A321, and also the Airbus A330s over the 767s. Asiana would also make even bigger investment with its Airbus A380 Super Jumbos before taking on the Airbus A350s in the late 2010s. During this time, Asiana would also diversify its interests to tap into the rise of budget carriers, becoming a major stakeholder in Air Busan, which was founded in 2007, and later Air Seoul in 2016. However, while at high in ambitions, it also began to see some financial problems with high debt and an accounting scandal would rock the airline. Despite getting government assistance and retiring old aircraft and making cuts, Asiana just could not overcome the rise of South Korea's budget airlines such as Jeju Air and Tiway despite having its own brands, and later the airline would be heavily affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. 
While other airlines around the world dealt with the COVID-19 pandemic, the Kumon Group and Asian were looking for a buyer for who would take on the second biggest airline of South Korea. A first deal was struck with the Hyundai Development Corporation before it was cancelled. After a second bidding process, Korean Air, South Korea's biggest airline and its main competitor, was awarded the majority stake in Asiana from Korean Development Bank in 2020. This would see the merger of two of the biggest airlines in South Korea, Korean Air and Asiana. Though as of the recording of this video, the merger between the two airlines of South Korea is still pending approvals in key markets. If successful, we could see Korean Air taking on Asiana, South Korea's second biggest airline and forming a supercarrier from the country. Before that, we'll take a look at the overview of Asiana, which within decades has rivaled Korean Air in its network with 90 domestic and international destinations with a fleet of 76 aircraft. Among these aircraft, Asiana has been heavily reliant on Airbus aircraft, including the A350, the A320, and 21 family aircraft along the A330s. In addition, Asiana is also an operator of the Airbus A380s. While mostly with a fleet of Airbus aircraft, Asiana does operate Boeing 777 aircraft and also happens to be one of the last operators of the 747. From South Korea, Asiana's main hubs in the Seoul area includes Incheon, which is primarily its international hub, and Gimpo for domestic operations, though the airline also has significant operations in Busan and Jeju. Compared to Korean Air and other legacy airlines of Asia, Asiana has a relatively short history spanning just over three decades. Yet, within three decades, it has experienced rapid growth and become a prominent airline in the region. Regardless of the outcome of if the merger between Korean Air and Asiana were to be successful, it's likely Asiana would cease to exist, especially with the financial situation, with Korean Air taking on the major airline role in South Korea, and then the name of Asiana would fade away into history. I definitely hope you enjoyed this video of the history of Asiana Airlines. If you have any experiences with Asiana Airlines as a passenger or worker, or would like to share some knowledge that I did not mention in this video, feel free to share it in the comment section below. In the meantime, this has been Flights in Asia, highlighting the news and updates from the aviation and travel scene in the Asia Pacific. For more of the latest updates, you can check out the website at www.flightsinasia.com. In the meantime, thank you for watching and have a great day.